Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson in my piano course for beginners level two. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up. If you're interested in getting the accompanying method book for this course, there's going to be links for that below. And I also offer online piano lessons. If you're looking for one, there's going to be information below. In this lesson, we're going to learn a very short piece called Flowing Like a River. The reason why it's so short is because it's trying to teach you one specific aspect of legato playing. Let me demonstrate it first and then I'll talk you through the piece. This piece should be played with utmost fluency and pay special attention to the short phrases in the right hand, which are broken down into two bar or two measure phrases. The hand has to lift after every single slur. The left hand doesn't have any slurs, but I was playing it smoothly. And the reason for that is you can see the word legato underneath the left hand first note. And that means that the entire left hand is supposed to be played smoothly without any particular lifts or phrasing. And you'll see this very often in accompaniments when the accompaniment is just flowing in the background like a river. We just use the word legato instead of endless slurs or a very long slur. It just keeps it cleaner. And you know that the left hand is just supposed to be played smoothly all the way through. So let's start with that left hand in the A position, so A number five and number one on the E, one finger on each note. And it's going in skips, so starting five, one, two, three, one, two, three, B, C, D, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now make sure the hand is not staying stiff, so it's following the melody, it's doing wrist circles as you go up and down, and it's nice and soft. Just like a river, think of that complete fluency, you can't see any bumps anywhere. Right hand starts in the A position as well, so number one on the A above middle C and five on the E, and it's going to go like this. One, two, three, one, two, lift. One, two, three, one, two, lift. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the notes themselves are not very difficult. Make sure you um, pay attention to the, to the counting. But the difficulty is going to arise when you put the hands together and one hand is staying connected all the way through, but the other hand is doing lifts. And this is what I usually see that happens in the beginning. So as soon as the right hand lifted up, the left hand lifts up together with it because that's what naturally should happen in our brains, that the hands kind of follow each other. And this is called coordination. And we have to learn how to coordinate between the two hands, how to lift up one while the other hand is not lifting. So starting in the A position, right hand on the E, left hand on the A, going together. When you get to the E, hold down the left hand, lift up the right hand, and then going on together, connecting the E to the B. We got to the end of the second slur, hold down the left hand, lift up the right, and connect back. Same thing. So this is my my usual advice to students when they struggle with holding down one hand when the other one is coming up, to stop at the point where the slur is ending and hold down the hand that's supposed to be sustaining and wait a second, really adjust, look which hand is staying down, which hand is coming up. Obviously it's going to break the fluency of the piece, but in the beginning it really helps to train the hands and the brain to keep one hand down and let the other one come up and 
uh, once you master that kind of motion, you can go back into the proper speed and the proper flow without stopping at the end of the phrase. Now, once you manage to do these hands together nice and fluent, there's one more thing you can do uh, to create a much uh, nicer effect. As you can see, the melody is in the right hand and the accompaniment is played by the left hand. So naturally, the left hand has to be played gentler than the right hand. So if I play it like this, I can barely hear the melody and the left hand is drowning out. So think of the right hand as a boat and the left hand as the river. So the boat is on the river and the boat is what we see and what we want to hear, but the river is carrying the boat. And the left hand is carrying the right hand, but is not overtaking it. We want the right hand to be dominant. So really quieting down that left hand And you can really exaggerate this in the beginning, making the right hand super loud and the left hand super quiet, and then kind of ease into a, a more subtle effect. But as long as you can get the right hand louder, then the left hand is going to sound much nicer.